Good day everyone. After we discussed the previous lesson about Southeast Asia and Indonesia, we are now going to tackle the third part of the series. And the featured Southeast Asian country that we are going to discuss is the Malay Federation. So what are we waiting for? Let us now fasten our seatbelt and let us travel in Malaysia today. Uh, in the first part of our discussion is the land and people of Malaysia. Malaysia is a federation of 13 states with an area of 320,947.7 or 984.7 square kilometers and comes passing the Malayan Peninsula at the southern tip of the Asian mainland in Sabah and Sarawak on the island of Borneo. As I had discussed in our previous discussion that Malaysia composes of two regions which includes the, the mainland Malaysia and the, the archipelagic or the peninsular Malaysia. This includes the 13 as you can see in our screen are the Malaysian state emblems and the geographical boundaries of um, Malaysia. Moreover, you can see that Malaysia is a federal constitutional monarchy located in Southeast Asia. It consists of 13 states and three federal territories and has a total land mass of 330,803 kilometers or square kilometers separated by the South China Sea into similarly sized regions. Peninsular Malaysia and East Malaysia or the Malaysian Borneo is the primary region in this part. In Peninsular Malaysia, they share a land and maritime border with Thailand and maritime borders with Singapore, Vietnam, and Indonesia. East Malaysia or the Insular Malaysia shares land and maritime borders with Brunei and Indonesia and the maritime border with the Philippines and Vietnam. The capital city is Kuala Lumpur, while Putrajaya, or the newly established um, city, is the seat of federal government. Um, this is their major step in transitioning to a more sustainable um, living or sustainable cities. With a population of over 30 million, Malaysia is the 44th most populous country. The southernmost point of continental Eurasia, Tanjung Paya, is in Malaysia. And located in the tropics, Malaysia is one of the 17 mega diverse countries on earth with large numbers of endemic species. As we can see because of its location both in insular and peninsular, we can see that this Southeast Asian country is very diverse in terms of its natural resources like the fauna and the flora and fauna in this particular region. And testament to this are these. Um, let's go into the next slide. Here, we can see that most of it is covered with dense tropical jungles and swamps with an extensive mountain ranges with tigers, wild beasts, and lush of tropical forest. You can see here the um, rhino hornbills, which are large, beautiful birds with prominent orange and white backs topped by a curved cask. It is the national bird of Malaysia. So here in the Philippines, we have the um, Philippine eagle, but in the Malaysia, their national bird is the rhino hornbills. Malaysia is one of the 18 most biodiverse countries in the world due to its rich flora and fauna, as I had said a while ago. Considering that it is a tropical, located in tropical region, so it is abundant into rainforests and um, it also occurs here the monsoons monsoon season like in the philippines so th these are the two major cities in malaysia their capital city the kuala lumpur and the putrajaya or the federal government center here th this is a this two cities or capital cities are famous not only in their uh, locality but across the world considering that in Kuala Lumpur we can see the Petronas Tower which became um, 
uh, the tallest um, twin tower in the world. Um, Malaysia is the world's largest supplier of natural rubber, balm oil, pim and and tropical hardwood. They are main exporters of these primary um, goods or furnitures, furniture sources. Manufacturers, cars, electronics, equipment, pharmaceuticals, and fertilizers were also being produced here in this country, considering that after their re liberation and the formation of the Federation, they transitioned into a tradi or into industrial society considering of the good governance of their um, government officials which will be tackling um, later. The third Malaysia is also the third largest trading partner of the Philippines after the United States and Japan. So um, Philippines plays a big role or important part in the economy of the, the Malaysia and vice versa. So we are now going to tackle about the people of Malaysia. Malaysia is home of the 27 people and about 54% per, were Malay or Malay and 45% are Chinese and 10% are Indians. Ethnic cousins of Filipinos and Indonesians, the miracle, are friendly, hospitable, or the Malis are friendly, hospitable, and easygoing. Same as true to our personality um, as Filipinos, they are also friendly and hospitable in terms of welcoming people and also in accommodating the um, their visitors. Uh, compared to the Philippines, unlike in our country that we are Christian majority, but in Malaysia, they are Muslim majority of them are muslim and their primary religion is islam and and bahasa malaysia is their national language since 1972 spelled words similar to bahasa indonesia so considering that these regions or these countries are in are malay so they are um similarly um um similarly the same or they have same origins in terms of their language the indonesia malaysia and also the philippines english is widely used in official and public functions considering that they are prosperous countries so they need to adapt to the lingua franca which is the english as you can see here in our presentation, the graphics or pictures of um, the happy people of Malaysia. In the first picture, you can see a beautiful lady, and um, of the and the and her background are very intricate ornaments and headdresses. This showcases the rich cultural heritage or Islamic heritage of Muslim together with their um um or original uh, cultures before islam spread in malaysia and on the next side are uh, women wearing the traditional muslim skirts and their headdresses this shows that uh, malaysia is predominantly muslim in terms of their um, the way they dress and their culture so um, after we had the background of the people of Malaysia, we are going to take a um, look back on the past of uh, Malaysia, uh, the early history of Malaysia. The name Malaysia came from early maps. It was supposed to be called Federation of Malaya, but Singapore changed its mind and opted out, hence the second name changed prior to the unification of the sultanates. It was a collection of small rulers with a strategic location as the entry point of the Strait of Malacca between the Indian Ocean and Spice Islands. Reflecting to this or implying to this, we can see that um, Malaysia plays a great strategic location um, that benefited their economy because they are the um, the open uh, um, they had the opening ground in terms of when um, these Western traders went to the East. 
Early inhabitants of the peninsula and islands came from the Austronesian settlers or settlers from the Asian mainland, especially in China. We can see that uh, Malaysia is composed of different small nations. Um, in the past, there is a, a, a law or a proposed bill that wanted to unify Singapore and Malaysia but at the end Singapore um, opted out to participate or to become part of the Federation of Malaysia hence it became an independent um, democratic um, country of Singapore um, there are different legends um, attributed to the origin of um, Malaysia, including the legend of Malacca tree. In 1403, the significant um, the significant when Parameswaran, the last Sri, Sri Vijayan prince from Indonesia, founded the Sultanate of Malacca. The name Malacca came from the native tree called Malacca, which bears hard nuts of medicinal value and whose bark is used for dyeing. The Westerners knew or also knew the strategic value of the Straits of Malacca and the Spice Islands of the Moluccas. It is a major port and trading center in Asia. It is already being discussed in my previous um, lesson or discussion about the importance of Malacca and Moluccas in terms of um, exchange of goods and their um, significant um, natural resources that can be sourced out in this region. So here, um, we can see different personalities during the um, colonization period in Malaysia. As all we know, Malaysia is being colonized by the British or the Great Britain. And it is also, um, their motives is about trading or to make money. One, um, um, before the British came is Alfonso de Albuquerque, uh, a famous Portuguese explorer who captured and colonized Malacca. The Dutch and British soon followed and contended for the local riches as well as the alliance of native rulers. As we can see here that um, Alfonso de Albuquerque Bukerke, is um, a colonizer or explorer who captured uh, Malacca in the 1511 and this prompted other colonizers or explorers to also explore the region and this um, uh, became the reason why Malaysia was being colonized by Western powers. Another what, um, important individual or personality that um, affected the whole country is Francis Light. Starting in 1786, Francis Light of the British East India Company acquired the land of Penang, which is also a state in Malaysia. The 19th century saw the gradual extension of British influence and control over Malay Sultanate. In here, um, because of the uh, growing influence of Great Britain, um, Malaysia did not escape from this influence, considering that uh, they were being colonized by um, Great Britain. You, we can see here that timber, fresh water could be found all, all year round in what I have said a while ago. Captain Light concluded that it would take up to seven years to establish a trading base in Phuket for the East India Company, including the time it would take to negotiate a deal for the handover of the island from the Siamese Clear parts of the thick tropical forest established a settlement and secure adequate self-sustaining food supplies for the population. In here, because of the influence of the West, um, the lives of the common people changed and their mindset became westernized. But still, they did not forget their origin. Another personality was Sir Stamford Raffles. The rise of Malaya and Singapore was due to Sir Stamford Raffles. Be um, the development of the Malaysia and Singapore was attributed to Sir Stamford Raffles, a British Empire builder of the Straits settlements and Singapore 
and the development of pin and rubber industries. He developed these industries for the sake of um, Great Britain, but also helping the economy of Malaysia and Singapore. By World War II, British Malaya was composed of the Straits settlements of Penang and Malacca, the Federated States of Pahang, Perak, Negri, Sembilan, and Selangor, and the independent states including Johor, Kedah, Perlas, or Perlis, Kelantan, and Trengganu. All of these states um, being influenced or were being influenced by the colonial powers and this affected their economy and their cultural landscape. Thanks to Sir Stamford Raffles, there are different buildings or establishments that are still being um, um, located or um, that still stand in the region, most part of Malaysia. That is the um, rich historical background of Malaysia and today or the, as the continuation, the World War II and the Malay nationalism. Um, similar to other um, countries in Southeast Asia, they also aspire for independence, which we call the Malay nationalism, after the World War II and during as well. On December 10, 1941, the Japanese planes sank two warships, the pride of the Royal Navy in the East, Prince of Wales, and Repulse of Malay Coast. This is one of the major defeat of the, the British Navy or the Royal Naval Army. Two months later, in on February 15, 1942, the military bastion of Singapore surrendered to the Japanese and the entire peninsula was lost. And British Prime Minister... Uh, Winston Churchill, Churchill called it the Britain's biggest defeat, considering of the loss of their fleets. Japanese hated and massacred Chinese and inflicted atrocities on Western prisoners of war and civilian internees in Changi Prison, Singapore. Uh, in this um, site, we can see that um, the effect of World War II to, to the uh, Malaysians and Singaporeans during this period and the British could could not um, do anything to defend their colony and and they went back into their country and to recalibrate and to think on how to defeat Japanese once they uh, will be going back or once they come back um, today we know that Changi airport we know that Changi airport which is one of the most technologically advanced airport in the world but in the past Changi airport or the location of Changi airport which is the Changi in in Singapore is also a prison um, site during the um, Japanese occupation in the region you can see here the three photos um, first is the um, um, Pr Prime Minister Winston Churchill who became a prime minister during the World War II in Great Britain. And at the first um, picture at the upper part is the fleet of uh, Great Britain when, when they went back and to redeem themselves. And in below of this fleet is the picture of the Changi prison where um, the prisoners of war were being uh, maltreated by the Japanese during the World War II. We can see that they are very malnourished and they are being abused by these Japanese. Not only these um, Western individuals are being or were being um, maltreated by the Japanese, but also the Chinese uh, who were um, historically hated by the Japanese. After their um, big fight or their um, f um, victory against the Japanese, um, here comes the Federation of Malaya when they were being liberated. Um, resistance to Japanese rule fell on the Chinese Malays under Chin Peng of Malay Communist Party who harassed the Japanese from the interior jungles of the the highlands this was this happened during the japanese occupation even japan um established 
influence in Malaysia during the World War II, there are also resistance happening. And one example is this um, resistance headed by uh, Chinese Malay Chinpeng. After World War II, the British tried to reassert themselves, but they were now facing a two pronged opposition from independent minded Malays and the terrorist attacks of the Chinese Malay communists. So we can see the two um, sides of Malaysia when they wanted to get independence, which are the independent minded Malay Malays where they want a true independence without the interference of other Western countries. And the other is the terrorist attacks coming from this Chinese Malay who wanted a uh, communist Malaysia. Since it would have been too bloody and expensive to stay, the British decided to quit and grant full independence to Malaya, and which at the time included Singapore. So before Malaysia and Singapore being separated, they are um, single entities called the Malaya. This was ruled by um, Great Britain for a very long period of time. And during this um, period of federation in Malaya or in Malaysia, Great Britain gave them the full authority in their own land. Moreover, we can see here after they were being liberated, there is also internal threat including the rebellion in Malaysia. On February 1, 1948, the Semi-Autonomous Federation of Malaya was inaugurated. The most serious threat to it came from the Communist Insurgency in 1948-57, which was led by Chinpeng, the former guerrilla leader. Uh, um, as I had said a while ago, um, Chinpeng is a Chinese Malay who advocated for a Malaysian communist form of government. For nine years, the communist rebels terrorized the country. They killed rich European and Asians, ambushed government troops, and looted and destroyed the property. So this is the radical actions of these communists to assert their ideology about communism. When the communist rebellion finally ended in 1957, about 2,000 of the surviving rebels fled to the jungle on the border of the Thai of Thailand. With Thailand, in this, in this is the sign of the greater prosperity of Malaysia. So the Federation of Malaya gained independence in August 31, 1957, and this was happened, um, spearheaded by Tunku Abdul Rahman. He is known to be the father of Malayan independence. He spearheaded a movement to unite Malaya, Singapore, Sabah, Sarawak, and Brunei into one Malay nation. The Sultan of Brunei refused to join at the end. So, um, Tunku Abdul Rahman has this vision to unite the Malay nation into or to unite the Malay race into a single Malay nation. And this uh, did not happen because of the individual differences of each region. But um, Sabah and Sarawak eventually joined force with Malaysia or with Malaya to create the Federation of Malaysia. But Singapore and Brunei um, at the end, made their decision to create their own independent nation. And this was being granted eventually. So here is the parliamentary government of the Federation of Malaysia. Malaysia became a parliamentary government like the British model or their predecessors or the colonizers who colonized Malaysia for a very long period of time. They inspiration in the form of government of, of Great Britain and applied it to their own independent, um, newly independent nation. Unlike British monarchy, the Malay king is not hereditary but elected from the local sultans and has fixed term. So compared to the monarchy which is for um, long period or it is hereditary, in, in the monarchy of Malaysia, there is an election of different sultans to who is wed or to whether who or to who is 
or who wanted to rule or to become the head of the monarchy. Later, constitutional changes made the Malay king less powerful and more of a symbol of national unity. So it became a constitutional monarchy wherein um, the monarchs are just a symbol of national unity and the identity of the country. But the original ruler come from the elected official headed by the prime minister. He may not interfere in politics or veto laws. These are the um, prohibitions that was given to the monarch of the Malaysia. So as of now, the prime minister is the head of government and king is the symbol or the head of the state. And he is now um, the sultan, King Al-Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmad Shah of Pahang. He is the elected sultan or he head of the monarchy of today's Malaysia. And the... Um, the current Prime Minister of um, Malaysia is Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim since 2022. And we can see in the news that there is a bilateral cooperation between our current president, um, Ferdinand Marcos, and Anwar Ibrahim to discuss different uh, activities or diplomatic relations between the two countries. Um, in here, Brunei refused, as I had said a while ago, to join and headed to it its independence in 1984. Also, Singapore joined at first but left the federation in a tearful farewell in 1965. The Borneian portion of Malaysia now only had Sarawak and Sabah or the North Borneo. But those two nearly did not make it due to troubles with um, their neighboring states, which includes our country during the period of President Justado Makapagal and in Indonesia also the uh, presidency of President Sukarno. The Philippines under Maka Makapagal filed a claim to the North Borneo or the Sabah. This rejected um, by the Britain and Malaya and the UN came in to ask local people to choose their authority. And the UN survey showed that um, North Borneans choose to stay within the influence of the Federation of Malaysia. And the Philippine government protested the hostily conducted survey, but successive presidents have not consistently pressed the claim, which rests on an 1878 lease by the Sultan of Sulu to the British North Borneo Company. The Sulu Sultan insists that the word Pajak in the agreement, this is the argument of the Sultan on wet on his claim about on his claim on Sabah or the North Borneo. In the agreement meant least while the other parties of or the the federal government of Malaysia they interpreted the Pajak as sale. The Malaysians offered to continue the annual payment to the Sulu Sultan. Another um, claim ca is coming from the Indonesians during the presidency of President Sukarno. The Indonesians posed more serious threat because they used military force to threaten the new Malay state. President Sukarno wanted to assert Indonesian superiority in the region and with the dubious motives ordered Indonesian troops to invade Malaysian territory in Borneo in a war called the Confrontasi or the Jungle War and ended only when Sukarno fell from power in 1966. So these are the border disputes or territorial disputes that Malaysia encountered in its lifespan as an independent state. So we are now going to tackle about the modern Malaysia. After all the challenges faced by Malaysia, until its independence, um, we can see that Malaysia today is very progressive and it is um, more progressive compared to its Southeast Asian counterparts. On September 16, 1963, the Federation of Malaysia was reborn with Tunku, Tunku Raman 
or Tungku Abdul Rahman as the first prime minister and one dominant political party in parliament. The process of stabilizing the new nation was difficult. In 1609, racial riots by Malis erupted against Chinese and Indian merchants who controlled the economy. Oh, the the modern-day Malaysia also encountered different challenges or internal conflicts, including the um, one-party system in their in their political government during the period of Tunku Abdul Rahman to consolidate consolidate power and to in um, implement regulations and programs to be addressed um, at a faster rate. So here is um, the, the primary or primary mover of development in Malaysia. He is Dr. Mahathir bin Mohammed. He is a physician statesman between 1981 to 2003. He is considered to be a visionary prime minister uh, with the strong decisions that took Malaysians by surprise but improved their lives in the hands of Mahathir stayed on so long. Even she or he stayed in the in power, but um, his regulations or programs really affected the uh, modern day Malaysia. He limited the power of the royalty, silenced the op opposition and empowered native Malay uh, merchants or the Bumiputra entrepreneurs with the higher oil income. as. Um, Malaysia is also an oil exporter because they have rich or a uh, big or large source of oil reserve. He encouraged new industries and build infrastructure and new buildings. This is the development um, imposed by Mahathir bin Muhammad during his um, premiership. He transformed Malaysia into an industrial nation compared to his um, count um, to other countries in Southeast Asia, the economic boom in Malaysia easily goes on and on because of the um, development and the political stability in the country. Uh, because of this economic, social, and political development, Malaysia became ahead compared to its counterpart here in Southeast Asia. So the developments in Malaysia, we can see there are different developments including Malaysian industry, economy, education, science, technology arts, and tourism. Here are the um, two famous um, infrastructures or to, which became tourist attraction or tourist sites in the country, which includes the Petronas Tower and uh, an airport which um, caters millions of people, or millions of tourists to enter Malaysia. This really helped Malaysia to become a global tourist destination. Another important development in the modern day Malaysia are the North-South Expressway, um, the Bakun Hydroelectric Dam, and the Putrajaya. All of these um, infrastructures and um, developments were attributed to their um, late president, Mahathir bin Muhammad. And all of this continues to develop as um, today. But um, there are different um, issues that Malaysia al also um, faces today. And it is up to the government and to the people on how they can address this for their betterment, for the betterment of their country in cooperation with other Southeast Asian nations. And with that, I would end my uh, presentation by saying that Malaysia is really a driver of change in Southeast Asia. So with that, thank you for listening and I hope you for your cooperation in sharing your opinions and additional information regarding Malaysia and the, the previous discussion that I had tackled. Once again, mabuhay and goodbye.